In this video, we're going to move our sprite here, both with dragging with a finger on mobile, and then also on web, we're going to be able to do this with the keyboard left and right arrows. So picking right back up from where we left off in the last video, we have our player that can fall, but it can't be moved at all. Real quick, I do want to update this background color to just be yellow, and it will now make everything kind of look a little bit more uniform. So now to add the movement, we can start in our Go Green game here, and we're going to actually have this Go Green game identify when a gesture is made. So we're going to do the gesture detector first, and then we'll go and do the keyboard detector. In our game here, we're going to add a width, and then add the horizontal drag detector. And we're going to need to import that from Flame Events. Once we have that, we can override the on horizontal drag update. And within here, we're going to actually call our world. And then our world is where our player exists. So depending on how you have your game set up, what we really want to do is get a function on this player class and access this directly. Let's actually create that function real quick right now. And we're going to call this move. And this is going to take a position of X but it's really going to be the change of X. So we can call this the Delta X. So this is what we're going to want to call from our drag detector. And we'll be using that world, which if we open up our go green world, you'll see this is the world that our current game is using. And this has a player and we'll define the player up here as a late final. And then in our on load, we'll set that player equal to the player. And then of course we can just modify the add here to add this actual player. And the reason we're doing this is now we'll have access to this player object, which we're creating the instance essentially right here, but we'll have access to this from the world itself, which means over here in our go green game, we can call world.player. And then from there we can call move directly on that player. And the move is going to be taking that Delta X, which we can get from this info right here. And it's going to be the info of the delta and then the global, which is the vector. And then we just want to get the X value here. So this is going to give us the change in the X when we are dragging. So it appears our world is actually not recognizing that player that we just created. And the reason for this is because our flame game doesn't understand that our world is this go green world. So to fix this, we can actually just tell it that our flame game has a world of this go green world. We can see that that issue is fixed now. And if we were to go into our player now and just print out that we moved, we can now rerun the app and just see as we move, we're getting that, that moved printed out. So this is good. Our game now is triggering the player move function. So now we just need to use this function and actually update the position of our player. So we're given the amount that the player is moved or should be moved based on the amount of drag that's happening left and right. So we can create a new variable here. And this is kind of similar to what we're doing in the update, except of course we're using the X instead of the Y. And we're just going to take the current X and then add to it the X that's getting passed in. And actually, if we were to take this and then just set our position X equal to that new X, and if we were to rerun this, it would, you would see it would work, but you can also move it directly off the screen. And this is not something that we want. So we're going to actually add another check similar to how we added that check here for our dropping where it only drops to at maximum the bottom of the screen. We can do a similar thing where it can't go past the left or the right. So we're going to do this with setting the minimum and maximum X values. And let me just pop these in here. So the minimum is going to be the left side, which since this again starts at zero, zero, we need to divide by two. So it's the width of our game divided by two, which brings us over here. And then we're just going to be adding again, the size of that water bottle, which is half of that water bottle because our anchor point is in the center. And the maximum X is kind of the same thing. It's just the positive version of that. And we're subtracting the water bottle over that half that would have gotten cut off. So since we have those two values, we can set our new X position here with using the clamp. And what the clamp is going to do is just make sure that the value is within 
these two values. So if the value was outside of either of these values, it will just essentially be set to the lower limit or the higher limit. So we're going to be using the min x here and then the maximum x here. And that should be it. So if we save this and rerun it, you can see we can move it, but we can only move it to the edge of each side of the screen. So this is good. The last thing we're going to do in this video is actually just set it up to work with the keyboard as well. So this is going to happen back in our Go Green game. And we're going to first actually need to add the keyboard events. So similar to how we added that horizontal drag detector, we do need the keyboard events. And now we can override our on key event. And we aren't going to be returning this. What we will do is first set a speed. And I'll set that to 55 right now. This is going to be essentially how much the bottle is moved per click. And now we want to check that the event which is that key event was an actual raw key down event, which just means that a key was clicked. Now we need to check if it was the left arrow or the right arrow. So to do that, we can check if the key pressed, which is going to be part of this key event. If it contains the right arrow, then we're going to move this to the right. And we're going to be moving it kind of the same way we moved it up here with calling the move of our player but the amount we're going to be moving it is just going to be this move speed. So each time that the right key or the right arrow is clicked, we're going to move this by the move speed. And then after that, we will be returning that the key event result was handled. Then very similarly, we're going to have an else if here, and we're going to just be checking if this key event was the left arrow, and that will be with arrow left. And then if that's the case, we're actually going to copy this because it's going to be very much the same. We're just going to be going negative because when it's left, we want it to go in the negative direction. And if none of these conditions are met, then we're just going to be returning an ignore. So if we rerun it, and you do have to make sure you click the phone, I'm using the right and left arrows here. Although the swipe gesture does still work, the left and right arrows, you can see it kind of jumps by that 55. And another thing to note is that this on key event and even this horizontal drag update is happening on our game as a whole. So this is happening directly on the Go Green game. And then the game itself is determining what keys are pressed and then passing that along to the world and the player and moving the player. So for instance, if you wanted the, the right arrow to do something additionally, you would also add that right in here. And if you had other key events that you wanted to add, you basically add those all in here as well because you're just going to have this one override to the key events and then everything will be handled within here and basically passed around to different parts of your app depending on what those events are.